This is the model of palatine tonsil. It is a lymphoid organ. Organ I have said because it is enveloped by a capsule which is a hemi capsule. It is only on the lateral aspect inseed by the hemi capsule. So it is a lymphoid organ not the lymphoid tissue and lies in the oropharyngeal isthmus. The connection, the connecting link in between the oral cavity and the oropharynx. It is one of the important constituent of the Waldair ring. Waldair ring is at the oropharyngeal isthmus. The superior boundary is formed by the pharyngeal tonsil on the lateral aspect but superior by the side of the eustachian tube there is tubal tonsil then lateral but inferior palatine tonsil and below on the dorsal one fourth of the tongue is the posterior one fourth of the tongue is the lingual tonsil. So palatine tonsil is the important constituent of the walled air ring and this is the palatine tonsil this is a coronal section coronal section of the palatine tonsil it is almond shaped it lies in the at the junction I have said in between the oral cavity and the oropharynx this is the pharyngeal side that is this is the towards the oral side medial and this is lateral okay it is covered by the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium this is the coronal section when we look from the exterior aspect there are 15 to 20 pores on the medial surface of the palatine tonsil which leads to crypt this is the tree pattern crypt and this is simple tubular crypt this is somewhat longer more longer and this is called crypta magna it is the remnant of second pharyngeal pouch just below the stratified epithelium there lies lamina propria in which along the lining of the crypts there are lymphatic nodules this is primary and this is secondary as the, the germinal center has developed in the middle that's why the secondary lymphatic nodule is also known as centroblast because the proliferation occurs at the center and then it goes towards the outer aspect in the lymphatic nodule okay so this palatine tonsil it has got many mucus gland this is the mucus gland the duct this is these are the duct which should open at the level of base of crypt these are the these are the crypts and this is the base of crypt base of crypt is the base this mucus gland here the duct opens not at the base of crypt here it opens at the base of crypt here it do not open so the palatine tonsil is very common because the food grain which enter inside the oral cavity it do not flushed away by the secretion of the mucus gland. It entangled here and get infected and leads to pus formation which is known as tonsillitis. Again the tonsillar bed is very important. Just on the lateral surface this what in the gray color what we are seeing is the hemi capsule of the palatine tonsil then in yellow color these are the loose areolar connective tissue in which paratonsillar vein runs this purple color this one is the paratonsillar vein okay and then there is two fossa as this is the in, uh, this is the pharynx so first comes the pharyngobacillar fossa and this yellow wire this is the buccopharyngeal fossa 
in between these two this is superior constrictor muscle all throughout here the superior constrictor muscle the first muscle which lies in the tonsillar bed the lateral surface of the tonsil is known as tonsillar bed in which from internal to external aspect first there is loose areolar connective tissue which is shown in the yellow color in which paratonsillar vein runs then this the orange paper this one is the this one is the pharyngobasilar fossa and this yellow wire this is the buccopharyngeal fossa in between these two this is the superior constrictor muscle this gray one this is the mandible cut section of the mandible the inner aspect of the mandible this is the medial pterygoid muscle on the outer aspect this is the masseter muscle so triple m masseter mandible and the medial pterygoid and what is this this is the submandibular salivary gland this is the facial artery all these is structuralized on the tonsillar bed this is the facial artery facial artery also supplies the submandibular salivary gland and gives tonsillar branch which supplies the which gives nutrient and oxygen to the palatine tonsil in between these two branches this is the styloglossus muscle in blue color and this black one is the glossopharyngeal nerve okay and what is the blood supply this is the external carotid artery we all know inside the parotid substance it gives this is the maxillary and this is the superficial temporal artery through the maxillary artery this is the descending branch descending branch of the maxillary artery this is ascending pharyngeal artery it also supplies the tonsil main main branch is the facial artery through the tonsillar branch of the facial artery as well as the ascending palatine branch of the facial artery this is the lingual artery and the dorsal branch of the lingual artery this supply the tonsil so what are the arterial supply of the tonsil these are the dorsal lingual branch of the lingual artery ascending palatine artery tonsillar branch of the facial artery ascending pharyngeal artery and this is the descending branch of the maxillary artery thank you